Hello, my name is Alan Backlund. I'm a mechanical engineering student at Angelo State University. This is the spring of 2020, and this is my video presentation for our final project in measurements and instrumentation. The objective of this project was to come up with something that integrated different measurement instruments and sensors and build the entire project from, from start to finish. We were encouraged to get creative and not just limit ourselves to only dealing with sensors. So, you know, thinking about the entire project as a whole and what those sensors really mean to us as engineers and how we could use them kind of led to uh, thinking through different ideas for projects. In this case, what I settled on was using the sensors in our Arduino and the sensors that are made to work with the Arduino and integrate them into a, a water bottle rocket to track the location of a rocket through the air. Water bottle rockets are actually a pretty simple uh, design idea, but when it comes to tracking their location in the air, things can get a lot more complex. So the motivation behind this project really comes from just a general interest in rockets and due to us taking courses such as dynamics where we study the motion of an object and then now taking measurements and instrumentation this was kind of a good opportunity to use things that we had learned in previous classes such as uh, determining the acceleration and velocity uh, based on positions with respect to time and then now being able to integrate different measurement instruments and tools and those sorts of things into uh, a device that can track that information for us is is really just something that's very interesting and a, a challenge to see if we could be able to do it. Some of the parts that are going to be required are an Arduino Nano, a Bluetooth module for sending the data to a phone, a acceleration and gyroscope or gyro sensor, a SD card reader that will store the data while in flight, and a pressure sensor to measure the relative pressure. So one of the first steps was to model an enclosure that was going to hold all the electronics securely and the program that was used to do this was SketchUp made by Google. Now in order to model this enclosure properly I actually imported some pre-made models of the different sensors that we're going to be using while also verifying the measurements using a um, micrometer and what I did was I modeled little slots into the enclosure so that way all of the sensors can slide into those slots that way sensors can be removed later and uh, while the rocket is in flight they're going to be held pretty securely inside the enclosure Next was putting on a nose cone and making sure that everything fit inside of it and then sending it to the 3D printer. Uh, this model for the enclosure took about two and a half hours to print and that was just due to the resolution that I chose while the nose cone only took about an hour and a half to print because it's only an outer surface. Now that everything had been modeled uh, so that we knew it was going to fit inside of the rocket we could begin prototyping the board, the sensors, and getting them to all communicate properly with each other. So using Arduino's program called Arduino IDE, uh, what we're going to do is begin looking for these libraries that we're going to need in order to communicate with each sensor. Uh, the libraries are really crucial to getting this project done because without them we wouldn't have uh, the knowledge to, to program and find out ways to communicate with the specific chips on every single sensor. So the libraries that we're going to be using are the library for the SD card reader, the gyro sensor slash accelerometer, the Bluetooth module, and the pressure sensor. So as you can see here, this is the program that gets the pressure sensor uh, to work. It's also including temperature and then using pressure 
within the code you can set the relative pressure um, compared to sea level pressure for uh, this particular time of day and calculate the elevation based on that. Next up is getting the code working for the gyro sensor and accelerometer. Uh, same concept as before, we go to the library to find the definitions for the sensor uh, and then using the, the library we're able to generate the X, Y, and Z acceleration. This is raw acceleration data and as you can see it's sort of um, difficult to read and understand right now and that's okay because we can use this data later and in post-processing convert it into values that we can understand a lot better. Now what you were seeing on the screen just now is what's called a serial connection and this is done through USB to the computer uh, so you can verify that the code is, is functioning properly. Out in the field though the Bluetooth module is what we want to use to be able to do that. So the Bluetooth module exists in order for us to just verify that the code is running uh, before we actually set it up to go launch. Now during the launch the Bluetooth is not going to be very practical to, to gather up data and uh, mainly because the distance that Bluetooth can travel in the air isn't very far. So the SD card is actually going to be storing the data while the rocket is in the air and then the Bluetooth module is there for uh, verifying prior to launch but also it serves a pretty good secondary purpose and that would be to locate the device later after it's landed. So in a lot of cases with the rockets it's hard to see where the rocket itself landed and you start to search for it. So Bluetooth can sync up to your phone and connect to a device only if it's within a certain range and getting out close to the device is going to show a new a new Bluetooth connection available on your phone. So basically that's the, the whole idea is that you can have this secondary purpose for uh, a location beacon based on Bluetooth. There's actually some more sophisticated software that you can uh, load on your phone to hone in a little bit better and more precisely as to where that location is based on the signal strength but really it's not necessary if you're just trying to get into the general vicinity of the rocket then this would do uh, just fine. The next step is to set up the Arduino with some kind of a power source. Uh, we need something that's going to be small so it can fit inside of the enclosure. In this case the design is built around a 9 volt battery. And a 9 volt Batteries are really easy to come across. You can find them at any convenience store, hardware store, grocery store, uh, pretty much anywhere. So data loggers aren't going to really require a whole lot of power, so this is absolutely plenty of power to, to get the job done. The only thing with a 9-volt battery is that an Arduino only requires 5 volts, so we can't overpower it. We need to step down the voltage from 9 volts to 5 volts. Now we can do this using a buck converter. A buck converter is going to allow us to adjust with a potentiometer the voltage down from 9 volts to uh, anywhere in the range of 2 or 3 volts. So as you can see here it gets wired in line with the 9 volt battery and it's uh, soldered onto the board uh, through the voltage input on the Arduino and it's going to power all of the sensors. Everything is now contained within this enclosure all of the sensors fit into it, the power source fits into it, so basically it's ready to go. The wires will be cleaned up and tucked away and that way it's, it's really secure during flight and not going to get jostled around and have connections brace, break loose. So now we have the final design. You can see that the enclosure and all the components uh, wired up fit inside of the nose cone. Uh, it's got a really nice shape to it. It's real compact and once it gets glued onto the bottle it'll be pretty secure. The nose cone would be something that would pop off later and have a parachute and that was some of those limitations that prevent me from doing the launch right now. I'm having to design that. That's an additional project going forward. Uh, but we do see here now that we've got the Bluetooth module that's syncing up and connecting to the uh, Arduino and the phone and this is actually uh, displaying the 
data in real time. So this is something that we can then store onto the SD card and retrieve later as well. So in conclusion, this project was made possible by having access to an Arduino and a lot of different sensors that are made to work with our Arduino. These are usually pretty inexpensive parts themselves and the knowledge that goes behind being able to actually program them uh, to work with the Arduino is something that can be learned by most people uh, with a little bit of time. And as a result of putting that time into uh, this type of a project, we're able to now see that we can track a rocket using the altitude uh, by obtaining the pressure at any given moment. During the flight, we can track the acceleration and uh, its position using the gyro sensor. With that acceleration data, we can then uh, look at what the velocity is at any specific point in time. And then using all of that data, we can plot that and, and view its trajectory in the air on um, any kind of modeling software or simulation software. One other thing that's really nice about this project is that this project can lead to future research where uh, by obtaining the data that we, we are able to obtain now, we can then uh, look at what maybe the bo best possible design is for a rocket uh, with a different nose cone design, uh, maybe a different size water bottle, a uh, different amount of water, a different pressure that we uh, put into the water bottles to launch it, different fin design. So there's a whole host of different things that you could change for a rocket. And in our measurements and instrumentation course where we learned about the Taguchi design method, we could design an experiment to test a lot of different um, parameters and levels and come up with the most optimal design. So this is really interesting research going forward that we could uh, pursue using what we've done today. And this concludes my presentation. Hopefully this video has made it a lot easier to understand what goes into a project like this and hopefully makes you feel a lot more comfortable if you were to take on this yourself and uh, try to get it done. My name is Alan Backlin. Thank you.